diary since 2002 named Tel Aviv Journal. The rules she sets up for herself are, quote, no rewriting, no censoring, no rereading. She adds, I've recently discovered that one advantage to no rereading is that I don't scare myself. So maybe there are gaps in repetitions, but at least I'm honest. This honesty permeates into Karen's writing as she confesses in a recent post on September 2nd, quote, I can write an amazing list of places to visit and eat in New York, but I can't seem to get past the surface. Can't get into New York the way I get into Tel Aviv. This is a Tel Aviv diary anyway. Her inability to get into, yes, that's her diary. This is public information. <laughs> um, her inability to get into New York perhaps mirrors the unique and complex inter intermediary space that Karen and her work reside in. She was born in London, grew up in Rochester, and moved to Israel in the 1970s. She works and lives in a non-speaking, in a non-English speaking environment, and yet has become one of the leading English speaking voices in Israel. While well, many of her poems bring together everyday endeavors, such as shopping, eating, or spending time with family, Karen's work also touches upon physical illness and the journey towards recovery, as well as Israeli political and cultural life. In an earlier collection, In My Skin, her, her poems trace um, the mid-1990s when terror became part of Israeli daily existence. Mundane objects like telephones soon become webs of umbilical cords as Karen captures the hysteria of trying to contact a relative or friend after a bombing. But in her work, she refuses to take sides, dedicating a poem to Palestinian-American poet Naomi Shiab Nye, asking, what can we do? The people we love will kill each other for land and broken down monuments. She would rather be a kindergartner teacher, taking people up by the scruffs of their necks, saying, play nice now. In a recent collection, Miracles and More, Karen becomes witness, observer, observer, and caretaker. Her voice travels through the hospital wards and shifts into waiting rooms, always vigilant, constantly alert, waiting patiently next to the patient. But while Karen records these personal moments, her yous and eyes simultaneously speak to others who might share her own experiences. She writes in the poem, Trying to Pray, it is not only the problem of letters, that when you focus on them, you can't see beyond. It is the whole throng of words bunched together in uneven fragments with no apparent leader or even limitations. The logic of them escapes me and the idea of sequence itself seems so dependent on mere faith. In the introduction of another collection, Avla Kadavra, Karen writes, the word makes the world. She believes that this is the principle of poetry as well as of magic. She adapts the original Aramaic into Hebrew in order to shape new realities through poetry. She not only writes love charms and birth blessings, but poems for refreshing sleep, the salvation of trees, and even one entitled, The Morning After You've Made a Fool of Yourself. Beyond her individual works, a list of over 20 books now, she's also translated several leading Hebrew poets, including Yuda Michai, Dali Rabikovich, Yona Volach, Wani Somek, and others. Lines from poems appearing in her book, The Love and Clothes of Nakedness, infiltrate the seam lines of clothing from ha fashion house Comme il faut. And her poems have transformed into song lyrics, played by Thin Lips and Panic Ensemble. So she writes of animals on Tel Aviv's campus, crazy neighbors, housewives, being Jewish, being American, being Israeli, and most often just being herself. So before I invite Karen to the stage, I'd like to thank a number of people who made this event possible. First to Professor Steve McCaffrey for allowing this event to appear and including it uh, in the Poetics Plus calendar. To the following um, for also helping out with the event, Professor Man May Kim, Professor Dennis Tedlock, the English Comparative American Studies and Media Studies GSAs, the Argentine Tango Club, the Medieval Modern um, <laughs> Student Association, to Winnie Beck and Krista for allowing us to run out one of the most incredible spaces in Buffalo. Um, and of course, last but not least, to the awesome Graduate Poetics Group. So without further ado, please help me welcome, welcome Karen Alcoy. Uh, what's it, one of the things that's amazing is that uh, I, about two hours ago, I rewrote a number of the poems I was going to read tonight. So I just said I'm going to have to 
read from my computer. And the poems I decided to include are the poems that you quoted just now. Oh. So it's very, uh, there must be something right about this evening. I don't, I'm not sure, but I think it's you. Um, thanks. And so I'm reading a poem that was inspired today by, our, or part of it was inspired today by Morani. Part of it is old. So part of it has been published before, but it changed because of you. And I'm going to start here. It's called Reality TV. Uh, <laughs> and TV as in true verse, you know. TV. Okay. Since you probably have not been following the earlier episodes of the soap opera that is my poetry, you might not know this, but I have a twin. She's the one that, that, who writes this stuff and passes them off as mine. When we were young, I tried to reason with her, make her behave like you and me, but she'd sneak out at night and write perfectly outrageous poems. Morning sometimes, I'd find the remains on the floor between our beds. Of course, I'd hide them before Mom would come in, but it would be too late to put them back. Too late to pretend they didn't exist. Too late to negate the blatant evidence.